First of all, let me clarify that there's nothing subversive connected to this action, nothing underhand, no ulterior motives. It is what it is. And you happen to be in the department that is trying to solve that solution. And we are rallying around your efforts as the governmental organ that deals with it. It's very important for me to come to you, just as it is important for me to come to King Bezeni, and just as, as it is important for me to include our president, our DC, our leadership, and even the African Union, um, and the leadership there as well. Um, so when speaking to you, Mr. Pantenga, it is within the context of our leadership in general, in Africa and worldwide. Um, I believe that you're going to be head of most of the practical execution because you have the most expertise, most knowledge, most experience. So therefore we'll be working under your directions in as far as all these things are concerned, including the budgeting of what needs to be done. Um, I guess so, unless anybody's got any any ob objections to that. Um, as usual, uh, what we need is some very clear um, transparency, but that is already intrinsic within the uh, organ or tool that we're going to use in the execution of this, which is of course a tool that I hope you will take on board. It is very necessary for us to adopt, adopt this tool because of prior experience with uh, mismanagement of cash right across the world. I would not say Africa, because that's what the world likes to say, that it's only in Africa. The mismanagement of cash by governance is global and it is entrenched. You know, it is a pandemic, it is an epidemic or whatever you might want to call it. It is very much a, an ongoing thing everywhere. Okay. So we accept it for what it is, except this time what we want to see is results that will benefit the people. So therefore, we are asking for this structure to be adopted, not only by you. When you adopt it, it will be a first step. We want the banks to adopt it and we want the government to adopt it. For that reason, it is quite important that the government knows of these plans and the government sees what there is in it for them. There is something in this for everybody that I can guarantee. You see, nobody gets left out. And the thing in question is the 12 by 12 structure. The 12 by 12 structure is simply put uh, 12 people per one account in the national bank so that the money remains within our national control, um, contributing to the uh, community, contributing to our economy. Um, and uh, these groups being spread right across the country, basically, um, it widens the government's tax base because all these groups will be set up as businesses, see, uh, tax paying businesses. So they got to be registered as businesses as well. Um, that process, those technicalities, I don't know. We're going to have to get somebody in there to make sure that, that goes through. Um, so, but the concept needs to be followed through. Um, having said businesses, we're talking about VAT, and we're talking about um, we're talking about income tax and all the taxes that exist are being derived from even the furthest corner in Malawi. In fact, what we're talking about here. When we look at this situation, what we're talking about here is actually being able to raise taxes from the worst land possible. You know, we're talking about land that has been depleted of trees being the land that is going to raise the most money because obviously that's the land where the most trees are going to be planted. So the support to pay people to plant in areas that have been depleted of trees is actually going to raise taxes for the government, which means that all the government in Malawi needs to do now is to look at all the areas that have been left of trees and to calculate how much tax they're going to make from that through 12 by 12. So therefore, make sure that this idea of 12, 12 by 12 gets to the government and they understand, that they really understand what the, for lack of a better word, implications are. Implications to the taxpayer, obviously, is not an implication to the to the person who, who brings in the tax. Anyway, um, having said that, that's obviously a short touch on the, on the government. If we move on to the DC, that's exactly the same scenario, just at a higher level of execution. Likewise, if you take it up to the to the uh, member of parliament, that's a higher level of execution. You know, if we take it all the way to the honorable 
Saulo Chilima as another level of execution and all the way to uh, His Excellency the President is another level of execution of this exact same concept. Equal rights for one and all, equal opportunities for one and all through 12 by 12. All of it to be taxed for the benefit of the government. Okay, what we're looking for, what we're looking for, and this is important because now we're thinking about the Danish listeners, is that this structure should be the one that um, substitutes the structure of development that we have at the moment, uh, which goes directly to the central government and then goes out to, to the people or comes through NGOs. Uh, administration costs, running costs and all those things tend to take up all of the money or most of the money that is given by very good, loving and giving hearts in Europe, from the streets in Europe. Uh, this situation is untenable. The people have, are experiencing donor fatigue and have lost faith. 12 by 12 is the only thing that can restore faith in giving money to Africa. So if we have uh, experienced, I know we have experienced, that the amount of money is being decreasing. The money given to Africa out of goodwill and out of wanting to develop the place has been decreasing. Um, it is simply because of a lack of confidence in the structures that exist at the moment. So therefore, people, we've got to get ourselves together and present this structure together. And if we do so, then we are sure to be able to access the money that is allocated out of the national budget of Western donor countries to be... Um, to be distributed by 12 by 12 to all people. The government then winning the money at the end of the exercise or at the yielding side of the exercise, which is in the taxation. But remember also that there's a lot more taxes. When you plant a tree, you're also planting the economy because these are products and these are areas, which means that once you plant a tree, you plant a pattern of behavior, which will continually be taxed in the future. You see, so it is not a one-time tax. Furthermore, um, not just from the trees, but also from the behavior of the people who are in the groups, 12 by 12, 12 by 12, they will develop their own business ideas and they will be extrapolated, elaborated and continue growing and there will be a magnitude of ideas right across the continent, which all will be paying tax. So it is in our interest to invest in 12 by 12 just, and it is very significant that that type of investment is exactly the same type of investment that you, that you have when you plant a tree. So in this, in this way, we're actually going to be having nature and finance working together in tandem. That is what we uh, mean by, um, that is what I mean by socioeconomic strategy.